This is Daniel Scribner here with a quick preview of tomorrow's episode, which is the latest in our outlier investor series profiling renowned investors across public and private markets. In tomorrow's episode, I'm joined by Abby Levy, co-founder and managing partner of Primetime Partners, which is a venture capital firm that she co-founded with venture legend Alan Patrickoff of Graycroft and Apex Partners fame that specializes in what they call age tech, or investing in technologies around the future of how we age. It's a fascinating conversation that's changed the way I think about aging, ageism, and what's needed to make the best of our lives as we live to 100 and beyond. Here's one of my favorite moments from it. Tune in tomorrow to listen to the full episode. One of the questions I wanted to ask was, you know, if you kind of put on your cynical hat, what are there any good reasons for why people haven't invested more into age technology startups? Because, you know, one comes to mind, which is I could imagine just someone saying, could you ever build a big, profitable, interesting business focused on this segment? What are your thoughts there? <laughs> so, you know, with humility, I'll say, you know, I'm not the first investor to have to get excited by the data. When we started, I mean, most of our peers in other venture funds had a bullet point. Uh, in their investment themes around the the gray tsunami, or I mean, the data is the data. This demographic shift is not a surprise, um, and so you know, it's not that investors haven't been looking. The biggest constraint has been there haven't been founders building businesses or big enough businesses, um, and so the the quantity and caliber of the startups has been low. I, I've talked to a, a whole bunch of people, and I think there's consensus around that. What's different that I don't think we appreciated the timing of was COVID. Um, and COVID obviously would never wish to, 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 make, to have COVID have happened. But what it did do is it opened the eyes to hundreds of entrepreneurs of how much needs to be built for an aging population. Because every person in our country started becoming a caregiver, whether it was helping your parents or your grandparents find a vaccine, get delivery of, of their groceries, um, use FaceTime or some sort of social media app to stay in touch with people. Um, we all became caregivers. And it was the first time that you couldn't look at a newspaper without the front page talking about nursing homes. There was just this overarching shift in attention to aging. Um, and that sparked, and I can, you know, I can see it in our numbers of deals that we, that we saw, sparked entrepreneurs for the first time coming out of the woodwork to work on these issues. Um, you know, we talk about the healthcare side, but 50% of Americans are run out of money because we don't have retirement savings, enough retirement savings. That also came to light. Um, and so we had this kind of, you know, fermentation of issues that are coming to light. And for the first time ever, I think we have a crop of entrepreneurs that are really tackling them in a, in a significant way. Um, and entrepreneurs who are serial, not just you know new folks with a nice idea, but serial entrepreneurs who have turned their attention to this issue. So I would say the number one constraint of why there haven't been big businesses built in this space has been just a constraint of, of entrepreneurs building in the space. Um, and during this time, a company like Papa you know, has gone from zero to, you know, evaluation of basically being a unicorn in the space. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of activity, but I would say we're just at the beginning, Daniel, we are just getting started uh, in this ecosystem. Um, and so um, there still are a lot of barriers. But the one of the ones that I think has been dismissed is this issue of, you know, older adults don't use technology. And with 77% of older adults using telemedicine during COVID, 77% of older adults, I mean, I just, it's a staggering number. Like to say that you, who would have ever thunk it that you would have this popu population using video to talk to their doctors? It's changed everything. <laughs> 